been so long. It was our plan. It was like our first. It was our plan to go to the movies to go see it that night, bro. But what she wanted to do was be a real friend and come through for you hoes, bro. She wanted to come through for you hoes. Our original plan, even Nisa know this, bro. The original plan was to go to the movies to go see it. Y'all really want to be technical, bro. But the motherfucker kept calling her phone. You bogus as hell. You ain't coming to my hotel, bro. This is my birthday. Ooh, all that. Now your ass bogus as hell because you ain't coming to protest for her, but she bogus because she ain't coming to your motherfucker hotel party, bro. You bogus as hell because you ain't coming out here trying to help a motherfucker get justice for her. Fuck the tub out. What's up, my J4K riders? Now, we all know there are several theories on what happened to Kanika. But what I want to do tonight is break down and let's do it as far as common sense wise on how the night went and how it was supposed to go. Now, from the footage that we just watched, Kanika was supposed to go to the movies and watch it. But Irene wanted Kanika to come to the hotel party to celebrate her birthday party. From the footage that we just heard, the young lady stated that Monifa knew that Kanika was going to the movies. So obviously, Monifa and Irene preferred Kanika to come to the hotel party. Now let's get to the facts. So we know Kanika left her home around 11.30. She arrived at the hotel around 1.13. She was next seen going up the elevator with Shamaya and Monifa. I do not remember seeing Bree Bree on that elevator. And that bothers me a little bit. Then around 2.17, she made the Snapchat video with Monifa in the bathroom. Around 15 minutes later, she was ready to go. And this is where they lost her. Okay, now this is the first time we've seen Kanika on camera, and this footage actually says around 2 30 ish. Okay, but we were told that the clocks were like an hour behind, that's what we were told. So it was actually 3 30 ish. This is where everything go haywire and the confusion starts. So remember. If you remember everything about the story, she talked to her sister at 1.30. She was on Snapchat at 2.17. She was ready to leave and got lost around 2.30. Going back to the footage at 2.17, where she was on Snapchat, she didn't look drunk to me at all. Okay? So, what happened between 2.17 and 2.30 where she was alleviated? Next question, is the footage time correct or incorrect? Because to me it makes sense if she got lost around 2.30 and that camera shows her getting on the elevator around that time, to me, that makes more sense. Now the last time she was seen on the footage was around 3.30ish where she was about to walk into the freezer, supposedly. So... If the timestamp is originally wrong, which says 224, and it was actually 324, that means it took, up, took her about six minutes, or give or take, to get to the hotel freezer where she supposedly locked herself in. Now let's rewind it a little bit. Let's go back to the time that she was about to leave the hotel because she was supposedly so drunk, as Bonifa them stated. Now... The guy that was supposedly Ken or real good friends with Kanika that called each other cousins said Kanika got up and left with her friends. To me, that means she walked out the hotel room with them. Monifa them said they had to damn near carry her out the room. If that is the case, why in Sam Hill would you leave the girl in the hallway by herself where she damn near cannot stand when all it takes is one of you to go back in the room and get the keys and the cell phone. Now, are you following? And I feel like a motherfucker wasn't supposed to left her. Like, the way she was in that hallway dangling like that, G, you could tell she was getting irritated waiting on the motherfucker because she kept moving, bro. Now, did anyone just catch what she just said? 
she just stated the way she was in the hallway dangling, you can tell she was getting irritated. The only person in the hallway with her was supposedly Monifa before Shamaya went back in the room. Now, a lot of people will say maybe she didn't mean that. And that's what get on my nerves. When some, sometimes when the facts are put in front of you, evidence is put in front of you, stop looking, looking for an escape goat to say that didn't happen. When actuality, it could have happened. And for a motherfucker to say it was quick, uh, that two minute, that two minute leak, it wasn't two minutes, bro. And if you don't know what she's speaking of when she's speaking about the two minute leak, she's talking about the time it took for them to come back in the hallway where they left her at. Remember they said it took them like a minute or two to come back to the hallway to get Kanika? Well, obviously, that's not the case. Some say it took about 15 minutes for them to get back out there to Kanika. They stated it took only like a minute, maybe two minutes to come back and get her. If that's the case, that left so much time for someone to grab her or her to walk off, which we know that ain't the case. Now, let's play devil's advocate. Let's say Kanika did walk off. Kanika was not drunk. And the coroner told Teresa that the alcohol level would not have had her to the state that she was shown to be in in the footage. So she wasn't drunk. She was drugged, point blank, period. So let's say she did walk to the freezer, which we know she did not. The only thing that will make her do that is that the fact that she's out of her mind because she was drugged. So if you're following me, that leaves the question of who is responsible of drugging her and what was their motives? Who all was involved? To me, I'm, I'm going to always point my finger at Monifa, Shamaya, Bree Bree, and possibly Irene. Kanika was known by a lot of people at that party, but she was there with those ladies that I just named. And she was there for those ladies I just named. So those ladies are responsible for her. For one, she gave three of them, excuse me, yeah, three of them a ride to the damn party. How can you not have your homegirl back unless you had something to do with her death? Damn what you think. That's what I see. Also, after Kanika's death, we didn't really see them grieve like a real friend should grieve over the death of a best friend, close friend, good friend. I know people grieve differently, but to me, they went on about their life entirely too damn quick. This your boy Boss. I'm only here for justice. And that's it. If you disagree with anything I said, cool. Give me your thoughts. Just don't be disrespectful. I appreciate it. Because the bigger picture is, somebody hurt this beautiful soul. So somebody got to pay. Y'all know what it is. J4K! Love and y'all support. Purple hearts for